All right, I think we're live. No? All right. Okay, hey everyone. If you're joining me live, thanks for joining me. This is uh, the most nerve wracking experience of my life. <laughs> Much easier to actually film and edit a video than to go live, but really happy that we're doing this. And if you're watching the replay, you can comment down below anything that you want to ask me. I can still answer your questions later on. We're going to chat a little bit about kitchen design, how I approach uh, kitchen design. And if uh, you have any questions, put them in the chat. Uh, I'd love to hear about it. I see someone already said hi from BC, Canada. Karen, hi from Nova Scotia, Canada. So awesome that you're joining us today, joining me today. If I look down a bunch, it's because my computer's on my lap. And if my camera goes uh, dead, you're going to see me. And how I approach designing a kitchen. I see somebody had uh, asked a question about if you're doing a new build, um, what are some advice as far as the designing of a kitchen goes or how to lay out a kitchen. So I'm going to cover that a little bit because that's a really good question and something that we should uh, chat about. So I'm calling this design talk and um, we want to talk through a couple questions that I have laid out. Things that you should think about when you are laying out and designing a kitchen, things that you should ask yourself, things that a designer should be thinking about and asking you. And these are things that um, I would say I've learned over the years to ask my clients and think about when I'm designing a kitchen. Because a kitchen is not just um, a room in your house that is supposed to look fancy or supposed to have a certain style, although that can be elements of it. It's, it's, the kitchen is a room that's different for everybody. And so everybody has a little bit of different approach when laying out that kitchen and what their needs are and what their wants are and the things that they want you know, to have in their kitchen. So there's no cookie cutter kitchen and there's no one size fits all when it comes to designing a kitchen and whether it's a new build or whether it's a renovation. So we're going to talk through some of those questions. And the first one is... What is the main purpose of the kitchen? And it sounds like, well, that's just kind of a silly question. The obvious main point of a kitchen is so that you can make toast in the morning and, you know, cook some supper. So the kitchen has an obvious function, but everybody, like I said, uses their kitchen differently. And so think about this for a minute when you're designing or thinking about your, your renovation. Amy and I, and, and we have three kids. And so there's this time of year in September when all of a sudden we have to start making lunches for everybody at pandemonium. It's just lunch making season, school lunches. We have everything jammed on the countertops where it's, we're trying to prep for the whole week sometimes. And so we use our kitchen differently than my parents up the yard where it's just the two of them and they're not doing the same thing. So the way they use their kitchen is different than the way we use our kitchen. And so we have three kids, but maybe you don't have children or maybe you're single or like the, the, the way you use your kitchen is vastly different for everybody. And so you really need to think through that when you're planning out your kitchen layout. Hey, I have three kids and we're going to be putting them through school and we need a certain amount of counter space to prep lunches and we want to be able to make it functional and easy like our kitchen in our home, the kitchen that you see in my, almost all my videos is pretty basic and sometimes I get um, flack for that in comments uh, because you know it's not doesn't look very designed and the reason is we, I don't have time for that like we need to get stuff done we need to get supper made we need to get on the road like we we're a busy family and so our kitchen is designed to suit those needs I don't need to have uh, two ovens. So Amy's in the background going, yes, we do need to have two ovens. I don't need to have three or four dishwashers, though some days I wish I, I did. So you can think through those questions. What is the main purpose of this kitchen? How are we going to be using it? And not just today, but think about in the future, because a, a kitchen is a, a purchase that should last you quite a long time. And we want our kitchen in this home to last us for years. We don't want to be re redoing that kitchen. And so we think, our, well, our kids are all at the age where they're in middle school, high school, one's finished high school. 
And so we see this transitioning happening where our, our kids are hopefully going to be leaving. Sorry, guys, uh, but it's just the truth. Like, you're going to be going out on your own. And so we don't need this massive, massive kitchen when it's just the two of us. And so those are some of the things that I like to think about. How do we use your kitchen? Now, of course, you just may want a massive kitchen or a small kitchen. Like, there's things that you might just want and, you know, go for it. But when you're trying to plan out the most functional kitchen for you, think about how you're going to use it. Do you like to entertain a lot? Do you like to have people over? Where I live, we have things called kitchen parties. And, you know, you have the guy with the guitar and all the people crowd around the island. And, you know, there's just this atmosphere of the kitchen is this place in the home where there's entertainment happening. And maybe you bake a lot and you need space in your kitchen to facilitate that. Maybe you need a piece of marble so you can roll out the, the dough so it doesn't stick. Learn that on Tiny House Nation. Maybe you are, you know, are into um, you know, making meals, like you're, you're, you're a chef or you are an aspiring chef, like an at-home chef. Like I you know, just cook, but you really like to make meals or you like to make meals for people or you like to entertain people around your kitchen, have big, have big uh, suppers. Maybe during Christmas or whatever holidays you celebrate, you have a bunch of family members around. And so you have to have your kitchen functional for those kind of purposes. Do you need an island? Do you need seating on that island? Do you need two islands? I know people in the comments see two islands are so dumb, but maybe you need two islands. Maybe you need to have that extra space. So thinking through these things is really important, not just going by what you see in a picture, by going by what some designer tells you, not by going what's trendy. You really need to look at your kitchen and your future kitchen and how it's going to meet those needs. And so those are the questions that I talk through with my clients when we're going through the process of designing a kitchen. And they're, it, they're really important questions. And what happens is you begin to think about how do I use my kitchen? Because I never really thought about it. Like what, what are the aspects of my kitchen that I use and what could I do better? What are some things in my kitchen that you know maybe could change that I could use it in a more functional way? So What's the main purpose of this kitchen? It's not just to make toast and coffee in the morning, although for me, that's basically what the kitchen is, and to do the dishes. And, you know, as long as my kitchen can handle that workload, like, I'm okay. But I know for the rest of my family, they have other needs as well, and they use the kitchen also. It's not just me. So that kitchen has to fit everybody. And it's going to last us for years. So think about all those things and when you're planning your kitchen, especially if you're planning a new home and you're thinking about the the type of kitchen or a reno, the quality of cabinets you're going to be using and the future use of that space. So really important to think about what's the main purpose of the kit of the kitchen. A couple comments. A couple um, comments. All right. My Amy's in the background. She's like my producer. So go ahead. Let's do some comments. Um, well, 20 minute guitar players is waiting all day for this. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Um, so we have someone from Wexford, Ireland. Oh, so sweet. Yeah. So he says hello, and Karen says don't kick the kids out too fast. Yeah, I know. <laughs> John from Ireland. Hi, John. Uh, Ireland's my native land. Not personally native, like I didn't come from there directly, but my ancestors did. Awesome to have you on. Don't kick the kids out too fast. Well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll get back on that. I'm certainly in no rush to kick the kids out. Let's talk about the next thing that I like to talk about. Um, and maybe this, we already talked about this, but what will make the new kitchen match the purpose? All right, there we go. How's that? Am I wrong? Yeah, I'm back. And then there's a question, what will make the new kitchen match the purpose? So what will, so I, I love to bake. I love to make pastries. I love to, you know, whatever it is you do in your kitchen. Maybe you have a garden and you, you do a lot of stuff with, you know, you like to chop. You, you chop vegetables, you need a counter workspace that's going to work for you, that's going to last. I don't know if you've seen my video on Tuesday about my Decton, uh, 
you know, just completely went through the ringer. I have more samples of Decton actually that uh, I'm gonna gonna try to do something with. I'm gonna soak these in bleach uh, overnight to see if that affects them. And I'm gonna be testing other countertop materials. Quartz is gonna be the next one that I'm gonna really test. But I use uh, my countertop quite a bit. I need something functional. It's not gonna break. I don't have to worry about it. I don't want something I need to seal. I don't need something I need to worry about. I don't want cabinets I need to wipe down all the time, or I wipe my cabinets down a lot, and I need something that can withstand that. Like all those questions need to be answered, and so how is that going to fit into the purpose of this kitchen? And when you think through those, you begin to realize, oh, okay, well, I don't want cabinets that can't withstand me wiping them because I, I I'm a you know I'm I like to clean a lot. I have someone in my house who likes to clean a lot and they don't need cabinets that you know are going to be troublesome for them or the finish is going to wipe off and or you have someone who likes to you know chop vegetables and they cook they you know they they're they're more into being like a not just cooking a meal but they're they're preparing lots they need a lot of space so how am i going to make this new kitchen match the purpose so here's some of the things think about what is missing um, from your old kitchen you're planning a new kitchen you're doing a new build. Um, if you're doing a new build, my best suggestion for you, the, the best thing you can do when you're doing a new build, thinking about the kitchen, and I wish I had to learn this earlier, but the best thing you can do is to design your kitchen and then design your home around that. And what happens is when you go to get a plan normally from a draftsman or from, you know, houseplans.com or wherever you purchase and get your house plan there's just a, a kitchen in there but there's no real thought about it the draftsman's not thinking about you or your layout or your needs it's just that here's where the kitchen is and what happens is that the builder will make that space and your job then is to go and find a kitchen that matches that space and it's it's the wrong way to go about doing a new build for a kitchen find a designer have them design you the kitchen. Here's what I want my kitchen to be. Here's how big I need it to be. Um, here's, here's everything I want in that kitchen. And then have your draftsman or your architect or whomever design your home and fit that kitchen into it. Don't, don't do it the other way. And so often that's how it's been done. I've been given home plans and here you gotta design a kitchen for this. And the customers, you know, well, I really want to have a, an oven and a cooktop and this and this and this. I'm like, well, you don't have the space for that. Like, yes, my job is to design you the best, most functional kitchen, but if you don't have the space, you don't have the space. And, and if you want an oven or a double oven and a cooktop and an island, like you need room for that. And if the plan that you're going with doesn't have room for that and you're already in the middle of a build and you're trying to get some kind of kitchen designed, it, it's just a lot of time and money's wasted. So design your kitchen and then have you have that placed into that home. So here's, cause, because listen, building a two by four wall is way easier than trying to like squeeze in some kitchen that you're not gonna be happy, happy with. So that's my best advice if you are doing a new build, do your kitchen first. And while you're doing that, think about what's missing in your old kitchen. What are the things that you don't have? Do you have enough counter space? Do you have access to appliances the way you want them? Is there something that in your old kitchen, you just say, well, I wish I had this or you go to your friend's house or your neighbors or whomever, and you're like, oh, I really wish I had that in my kitchen, that cool spice pullout thing, that would, be really, that would be really great to have. Some storage, a pantry, <clears throat> lazy Susan. <laughs> Whatever it is, think about what am, what am I missing that I could really use and, and, and plan that into your kitchen. Now, obviously you're thinking that because you wanna do a new kitchen. So that's not, a no, that's like a no-brainer. You should be thinking of what am I missing. So the next question, think about this. What do you hate about your old kitchen? You know how you go around the corner and you, you always like hit your hip on the corner of that island because the clearance is incorrect and you just it bugs you all the time. Or you hook your belt loop on the hardware of your base cabinet and you nearly like pull the thing right out the drawer right off and pull your pants off. Like those are real things that happen. You, uh, you, you hate the fact that you don't have any ventilation. I talk about ventilation in numerous videos. So I, I don't like the fact that my 
kitchen steams up and there's smoke everywhere when I burn my my food because I'm horrible I'm horrible cook and I burn stuff. I hate the fact that that happens. So think about I hate's a strong word, maybe strongly dislike, but what are the things in your kitchen that you're like I never want to see this again? Microwave over my range. I I just never want to see that again. I I, th I think my mom is on and she's just a big nod for that one. Um, she can't stand the microwave over her range, and the problem is, is I designed that for her and I put that there. So uh, I'm. I'm sorry, mom, that I did that to you. But so these are the things you got to think about. This is what I don't like about this kitchen space, and I want it to change. And and so you you go with that. So these are kind of the common questions that you would have. But we work I work through this with clients, and we talk about it because there's things that you don't realize. I hate the fact that I can't open my fridge all the way because when it was installed, it was too close to the wall, and the door doesn't open up, and I can't get the crisper drawers open. So I, I need space for that. I don't like the fact that you know, when I pull my drawer out, it squeaks or it, it, it they keep pulling open on them on their own because the, the quality of the hardware isn't there or my cabinets are sagging or, you know, what are the things that you just, you should make a list, not just a list of your wants, but think list of your do not wants. I don't want this to happen in my kitchen. And that'll help you when you're going to purchase new cabinets as far as what type you're going to get, quality. It's going to help you, you because Sometimes when you go to a kitchen showroom or, a, you know, you come to someone like me who's trying to sell you a kitchen, I'm just trying to sell you a kitchen. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, I want to make a sale and, you know, that's the main thing. Now, I'm not saying that's every designer, but that's what you can run into. And if you don't have the, this list of things like, I don't want this, I don't want my drawers to do this, I don't want to hook my belt loop anymore, the clearance is, is too small, like I, I want something that's really functional. And be in the process. When I'm designing a kitchen for a client, they're the one, like they design the kitchen and I just kind of help them. I, I just know the software and I can give them a 3D rendering, but they're the ones who know what they want. And because they know what they want, it's really easy for me to help design their kitchen. But when they come in, they're like, I don't know, just design me something. I'm like, well, this is going to be difficult. You're not going to like what I give you because you do know what you want. And when you see what I show you, you'd be like, well, I don't like that. Well, you need to tell me what you want in your kitchen so I don't make those mistakes that you're thinking I'm making. So it's very important to have those conversations. And if your designer isn't asking you, hey, you know, what don't you want in your kitchen? Well, you know, you never, I never thought about that. What don't I want? Well, I don't want this to happen. Okay, good. Look at that, or make sure that doesn't happen. So these are really important questions that you need to look at when you're thinking about designing and renovating a new kitchen. Whether you're doing it DIY or whether you're having professionals come in, you're the one. You're the one paying the money. So it's important that you think about these things. All right. Question? Yeah, let's do a question. Okay, being that one or more of us might be wheelchair bound, yeah. when we renovate the kitchen, do we put the countertops at wheelchair height or the height that we currently need? So it's important that you have, if there's one of you in a wheelchair, you should have an accessible, like your kitchen needs to be accessible, especially if you're the one in the wheelchair who's using that kitchen the most, that kitchen should be accessible for you. So. NKBA has all the guidelines for accessibility. And when you're, if you're using a designer, they should be referencing that to give you the proper heights and clearances. If there's two of you, I, I, I have done a number of accessible kitchens for wheelchairs in the past where one of, um, one of them were in a wheelchair. And a big portion of that kitchen was wheelchair accessible. And then some of that kitchen was I guess not so much. It, it was in a way like it had higher toe kick heights, but it was a regular countertop height. Whereas uh, the, the oven was lowered, the cooktop was lowered, and there was space for the wheelchair to be able to pull in so that he could get in close. So if if the kitchen is used, you know, by two people and one of you is in a wheelchair, then plan out what you need to use. The, like if you're using the stove, the range, and you have a, a top mount range then that needs to be lowered that needs to have accessibility underneath if both of you are using the sink then think through does that height work can both of you use that sink and who's you know because both of you probably will be using the sink and and so you know maybe you just need a higher toe kick space or you need to have like 
um, the, the gables, you know, angled in so that you can pull in, but it be at regular height, maybe you need two sinks. So there's, there's a lot of different things that you have to think about, but I would say, again, there's no perfect way, but it's what is going to work the best for you. That's really what works like, you know, so you, 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 you talk through that. Here's what, here's what I need and here's what they need. And let's, let's do that. Designing an accessible kitchen is, is quite a task. Uh, be, because of those issues, but it's, you know, it's very doable. I would say, make sure that your designer understands the guidelines that the NKBA has set out for all the accessibility standards. There's a lot of them. There's a guy, like there's, there's 30 some guidelines and there's accessibility standards for all of those. You need to be able to reach outlets. Where are they going to be placed? You know, are they on the front of a false drawer so that you have access to them? You know, so these are all questions to go through and I'd say, yeah, make it, make it a mixture. Most likely if you were just by yourself and it was going to be your kitchen, I'd say, go for it. Like make the kitchen just for you. But where there's two of you, yeah, you, you're going to have to not compromise, but, but make the kitchen work for the both of you and, and make it accessible because there's nothing worse than, well, I mean, I saying this, I don't know that there's nothing worse because I, I don't have the need for that, but I can imagine that, if I don't have access to it, it'd be very frustrating. So, so think through those questions and that would be like, what don't I like about my current kitchen? Because if you're, if you're in a wheelchair and you're in a current kitchen that isn't accessible, it can be very frustrating. You need cabinets that pull down. Like we put in a, a, a pull down wall unit that was lowered for someone just like for myself in a kitchen, that would be not useful. But for this gentleman, it was the best thing in the world. He had access to everything pull out drawers and all the rest. So really good question. I hope that helps answer a little bit. Any other questions? No, that was it. Cool. All right. All right. So after you figure out what you totally dislike about your kitchen, let's talk about what you love about your old kitchen. This is a really great question. And I want to get to this one because there are things about your current kitchen, although you may want a new one, although you may be planning a new build or you're planning a renovation, there are things about your kitchen that work for you, that you love, that you like, that you that that you go to every day, and this is where everything's at. My coffee maker's here. Do this like this. Everything is is set, and I'm I'm comfortable with it. I like it. So when you're thinking about designing your new space, think about that question: What do I love about this space that I'm in, and what do I want to take from this space into that space? So I like my microwave in a lower cabinet. It's easy for everyone to access. That's where I like it. So I want to make sure I have that in my new space. I have a wall oven and I really love that wall oven. And when I make my new kitchen, I want to have a wall oven. I don't want a designer to talk me into getting a range because I really love my wall oven. So those are important questions and things to think about. What do I love about this space? Because oftentimes when we are wanting to do a new kitchen, we're just thinking about, oh, I can't stand this. I don't like the way it looks. I don't have enough room. I don't have enough for this. I, I have no place to put this. Nothing pulls out. Everything's squeaking. But there's probably, if you make a list, a, a good list of things that you really enjoy about your kitchen and that you want to take with you. So think about those things. Think about the things that you really love about your kitchen. The next big question, this is the big question that I hated asking until later on in my career and people hated answering because they think that you're just trying to get all their money. What is the budget? The better way of saying that is what do you expect to spend on this renovation? What, what do you expect to be paying for this? You must have some idea. Everyone goes into the kitchen renovation with an idea of what it's going to cost. And it's really important that for designers that, they, that we ask because if you have a $5,000 limit, and I've had people tell me, well, I don't want to tell you that. I'm like, okay, well, that's not very helpful because if you only have $5,000 and you want custom cabinets to the ceiling, moldings, lighting, coarse countertop, like, I'm, I, you're not going to be able to afford toe kick for this. Like, this is not, I need to know this information. Not so that I can get all your $5,000 from you, but so I can put you, so I can get the most functional kitchen that you can afford. That's what this is all about. 
So when someone asks you that question, it's a hard one. What is your budget? What do you, what do you expect to spend on this? Well, I expect to spend ten to fifteen thousand dollars. Perfect. Now I have a, a a place where I can put you to design that kitchen. I've had other people say, "Well, listen, sky's the limit. I don't care what it costs." Excellent. That you know, the sky's the limit. Then the sky is the limit. Is it can only put so much into a kitchen. So it's it's only you know uh, we can gold plate everything, but that's that's not going to help you. We want to get the still the most functional kitchen. If I only have five thousand dollars. Okay, what can we do at five thousand dollars to to make this space really, really good for you? I, I'm I'm not, you know. Hopefully, if you're going to some place and they're asking you this, it's not because they want to squeeze every penny out of you. They do have to make a living, and I have to make a living. And kitchens cost money, and because they cost money, and the price of things is rising and rising and rising, especially after the last two years that we've had. With COVID and the price of lumber and the price of building is going up and up and up. Getting the most functional kitchen involves knowing what your limits are financially and saying, "Okay, this is what I want to spend on this, and what what can we do for that? How can we make it really, really good?" I, I'm always surprised uh, at what we can make work when we know what we're working with. That's so important. So, what is your budget? Think about my new kitchen. Do I want to spend twenty thousand dollars? Thirty? So I just want to spend five. Look, where is that number for you, so that your designer can say, "Okay, let's let's make a kitchen that will work for you." Maybe it won't cost you near that amount, but it's important to know that going ahead, going into it. Really, really important. All right. If you're watching the replay, thank you for hanging along this this long. You know, normally when I produce a, a video, it is you know eight minutes. And change around that time frame. So, if you've stuck around for this long, thank you so much. In the comments below, let me know your questions about kitchen design. I would love to answer them. And we have another question, so let's do that. So, um, wood floor or tiling, also under counter lighting. Wood floor. Yep. <laughs> Tile is nice too. If you want something a little more forgiving, wood floor. A little warmer, wood floor. People worry about water, tile. We have hardwood right through our kitchen. It's right underneath all our cabinets. We laid it down first through everywhere. So for us, it's not a big deal. We have kids, water spills, wipe it up. I'm not super, super worried about it. But a lot of people are worried about water. And so for that reason, you can go with tile. It's cold. You can get inlays. I know Home Depot sell a, um, a a sheet that can go in your tile to make it warmer, so it's a little nicer on your feet. So that that may be something. I think it comes down to I don't think there's a right or wrong answer here. The great thing about the internet is I'll have a bunch of comments about well, this or that, and I'm surprised at how polarizing kitchen design is. There's there's no real right or wrong answer. I like personally to have wood floor. I, I like the feel of it. Yep, it scratches. Dropped a knife in it, made a scratch, made a dent. It's life. It's just the the we moved our dishwasher in the you know the night that we had our we moved in and the thing scratched the floor, and I was totally upset. And someone said, "Well, that's just a memory. You know, it's just a memory when you moved in." So it's like oh, exactly like it, it. It doesn't really matter. So uh, you know, you're gonna have people tell you don't don't do hard hardwood floor, don't do wood flooring. And I'm not an expert on flooring. But I know what I like, and I know what I've had in the past. And I'm not just a fan of tile in a kitchen, but normally it, it is a really good choice. But go with wood if you love it. We have another question. Yes. Um, does the total budget include contingencies, or do we need to add an extra ten percent or so? You should add twenty percent on your total budget. There is going to be something come up um, when you are doing a kitchen reno for sure. Now. When I'm talking about kitchen design and the budget for your kitchen, normally I'm talking about cabinets, countertop, installation, hardware. Um, normally I wouldn't put in flooring or tile or appliances or lighting fixtures necessarily. So in that conversation, there needs to be, well, I want, I want lighting, I want flooring, I want tile, and appliances, so all that. So in the conversation of, about budget, all that stuff should come up. now. If your kitchen designer, or if you know that, you should 
have a very good idea of the total price you're paying and that that normally shouldn't change like if i give you a quote or i give you you know here's what your kitchen's going to be and then next week it's like you know three thousand dollars more like until you sign once you sign on the dotted line that's a different story but i i hate that like i want to know the the total and you know, don't, don't tell me down the road, well, it's going to cost a little bit more. Like I just give me the whole thing and, and let me not like it up front and then deal with it. But you should have some contingency when you're doing, especially a renovation. Well, especially to, um, a new build because there's always, always stuff that comes up in a new build that just is like, I never thought of that. I never thought that would go wrong or the price of this would go up. But once you sign on the dotted line, then, then, then you shouldn't have to worry about it, but always plan for a little more to spend a little more than you think you're going to have to. Um, cause you know, things you don't, uh, some, we don't understand, not, and we understand, we don't know the prices of things. The price between this quartz and that quartz could be, you know, $3,000, you know, and you, all you wanted was quartz. We didn't realize that that particular one was going to cost you that much. So definitely add, add to that. And under counter lighting or any kind of lighting in the kitchen, I recommend pot lights in your ceilings and plan them out where they're going to be, where they shine and the type of light they're going to be on dimmers and under counter lighting, I think should be in every kitchen though. When it comes to a, you know, a budget thing, that's one of the things I would, I, we took out, we didn't put under counter lighting in cause we just didn't have the budget for it at the time or backsplash tile. So there's a lot of stuff that we took out that we should have put in, but we will at a later point. So definitely I, I think every kitchen should un, under counter lighting and some kind of light balance to hide those fixtures. And that light balance should be, uh, cocked up underneath so that you don't see light through the little seam. It's a little bonus tip for install installing light balance. All right. Yeah, do it. Um, as a kitchen designer, where would you place heavy cast iron pots and pans? In a drawer, wall, where? In a drawer. Pots should go in drawers just so that, especially heavy cast iron ones, so that you're not dropping them, especially if you have Decton. Uh, or any kind of countertop, really. You don't, you don't want to be dropping it. And, you know, how often do you drop a cast iron anything? I don't know. Maybe never. I've never dropped a pot in my life. I don't cook a lot, but maybe that's the reason. <laughs> but I still never dropped a pot. I dropped knives before, but I would say definitely put them in a drawer. You should have a dedicated drawer for your pots, uh, deep, you know, wide as you can get it. Uh, three drawer, two drawer, deep pot drawer for those items. And that, that's my suggestion. But again, like sometimes people hang them or definitely not in, a, in, a, in an upper cabinet, but somewhere accessible that's not too low, maybe in the lower part of a pantry or in a, uh, a base cabinet with pullouts. Definitely in a, in a base cabinet, though, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, Charlene. Uh, so hopefully uh, you're enjoying that. One of the great things about this, um, you know, YouTube is that you get to build a lot of relationships with people uh, who watch. And so just thankful for people who are watching. And if you're watching the replay, thank you for watching. Um, I hope you like it. Something definitely different. And uh, yeah, really fun. So we are going to sign off. It's been 33 minutes, so I'm going to say goodbye. And if we don't have any more questions, I'm going to let it go. Um, I really appreciate everyone who's joined, everyone who's watched, and we'll be back with a video next Tuesday where I destroy some quartz countertop. I'm going to put it through the ringer. I'm going to smash it, scratch it, beat it, light it on fire, do everything I can to the quartz to see how it compares because it's one of the most prominent materials that we put in our kitchens. Everyone wants to know how it stands up compared to other materials, so we're going to do that on Tuesday's video. I hope you like the Decton one. If you haven't checked it out, there's a link in the description below in this video. It's really interesting what happens to countertop when you light it on fire. It's really, really cool. So we're going to do that to quartz. We're going to do it to granite. And if I can get my hands on some other materials, we're going to do it to that as well. I think it's uh, really educational and I really like it. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you again on a live stream sometime in the future. We did it. Yeah. It was good. All right. Bye, everybody.